C.Pathfinder. Pathfinder. This is, I think, probably the next easiest problem. Um, so it was kind of designed originally to make it look harder than it actually is. It was designed to make you think it's a graph algorithm that you have to implement, so it, it was slightly scary. Um, so this kind of this description is actually pretty useful. It's telling us that we already have um, list of routes, the distance, as well as the average travel speed. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, we have to optimize some sort of travel speed. Um, and then input again, first line of input, number of legs required to reach the destination. This one is pretty nice. It has a picture, you know, so I can kind of like look at it and be like, oh, okay, so this one, three, four legs um, would be would be this input. Um, there's at least one, no more than 25 legs. These are just input bounds. They don't normally uh, matter a ton unless they're really big. So in this case, I'm looking at it. It's fairly small. I'm not too concerned. The the So then we have some more description of the input. We have some pairs. Each pair corresponds to a city. The first line contains one number, which is the number of routes from the current city to the next one. And at this point, I'm pretty confused. This input already description is confusing me. Um, OK, so as I'm looking at this, I'll look down here at the sample input and be like, OK, uh, we know what the first line is. That's easy. The second line is going to be uh, one number, which is the number of possible routes from the current city to the next one. So that's this thing. And then the second line contains a uh, in the pair contains two numbers for every route. So that makes sense. This is four four things. Um, that that adds up. This one is uh, six, and there's three here. Let me zoom in. I think this is a bit small. Uh, then I can figure out what these two numbers mean. First number is the average speed, and then the second one is the distance of the route given in miles. Okay, so that that kind of gives me um, the necessary ingredients for calculating how long it'll take to go on that route. Um, again, just reading in, uh, normally the, the way that I go about this is starting out reading in like the basic inputs. So N, that was this number. Um, and then reading in like, I have to do something N times because there's four things. So immediately, if I have to do something for a certain number of times, especially if it's given, for loop immediately. So then for each one, we have the number of routes. And then we have a list of the actual actual routes. Um, and here I'm going to do kind of a Python trick to, to read in all of these inputs. So I'm going to just do a list comprehension for all of these numbers. And for each one of the Basically, this is like an implicit for loop or, um, where we go through all the input, split it up, and then convert it, each one to an int. Um, at this point, like, I just need to kind of convert um, the pairs. So pairing is a little bit difficult. Um, you have to be a little bit careful about making sure that you go through that correctly. Um, one way of doing this pretty easily is um, just going through all of the um, indexes in the line. And then if I uh, mod, t mod uh, 2 is 0, so this means it's an even number, so 0, 2, 4, 6, etc. Um, if it's even, then we're uh, going to actually do our code. If not, then we're just going to skip it. Um, there are more fancy ways of doing this that don't involve this, um, but this is the this is kind of the trick. You have to avoid um, uh, avoid every other one. The other the other way of doing this is kind of by um, doing some more in, uh, index magic. But at this point, you can kind of we, we kind of need a, a max and min time um, 
because we have to determine for this route which one is the best. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, when, when I looked at this input, I also see, let's see, where does it actually say this? I, I kind of noticed that there's, you only ever really have one route to, uh, uh, or you only ever have um, to look at one line at a time because you have to get from each city to the next. You can't mix up the order in which you visit cities. So there's no nothing to worry about there. Um, and then I just kind of like do some ridiculous number here um, to make sure that I always get a minimum and keep track of which index contains the minimum. This is a classic iterate through a list and find a minimum type problem. And then I can calculate the route time. And that is just going to be um, line at i. Um, so again, i is going to always be even, so it's going to be 20 and then 30 in this case. Um, and that represents uh, the miles per hour. So to get um, to time, I need to divide. Nope, the other way. I need to have line i plus 1 as the first one. Ah. Okay, this should theoretically be correct. And then, oops. If route time is less than the min time, then min index is just equal to i. And we have to be careful here because uh, you have to do it in accordance to the actual route uh, numbers, not your not your index in the in the input line. Um, so I'm going to divide that by two with an integer division to ensure that we get an integer. I don't think it's necessary, but mm, doesn't hurt. And then min time is also going to, we have to set that to route time. Then once we've gone through all the inputs, print out whatever our min index is. I think this works. Don't quote me on it. Clearly not. OK. Uh, min index equals. Let me think about this. Is this incorrect? OK, this is another trick. Print line debugging. Use it because it's useful. Um, like, don't feel bad about print line debugging because it's fine. Okay, so the first input, does this make any sense? Route time of 0.75 and then 0.833. Uh, let's think about this. 20 miles an hour and 15 miles, right? So we invert the miles. We do 15 divided by 20, which should be 0.75. Then we do 30 divided by 25. Oh, uh, the reason why is that these are indexed, one indexed, instead of zero indexed. So that's another thing that you have to be careful about. This is why you should not submit <laughs> immediately. It's it's not it's not a good idea. And that looks right, except for this extra print. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, let's just see. Let me um, paste the input and then check using um, file redirection. Yeah, OK, it looks fine. So at this point, I'm just submitting the problem just so that you can see that it, it in fact works. But I want to take a step back and look at that last debugging trick that I used. OK, so. Obviously, the, the light outside has changed. That's because I'm editing. It's late at night now. And 
I wanted to take a moment to show you how to use file redirection for testing because um, it was hidden by my face on the actual video. And this is a really useful technique if you are in a programming competition. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to be able to obviously run your program um, just on the command line. So for Python, you just can type Python and then your uh, file. And then um, what you use is this, this care, uh, less than operator. And then whatever comes in after the less than operator is the input that your program will be given. Um, so for example, I might have c.input. Now this file doesn't exist yet, so I'm gonna have to go create it, um, which I will do. And in this case, I'm just going to copy the sample input from here and save the file. And uh, now over here, we can just press enter. And that input, all of these numbers here, were automatically input into my file. So I didn't have to copy and paste or anything. I just had to put it into a file and then use this file redirection.